Hi everyone, I contacted eight roofing companies to help me with this extension. That's right, eight. And none came back after several weeks with a price. And I just had no choice but to do it myself. If you're in the same boat, or if you're thinking you might be able to do it yourself, stick around as I show you how from start to finish, anyone can do it and make it look brilliant at the same time. And if I can do this, you most certainly can. Let's get the big question out of the way first of all. How can you or I do something that tradesmen practice for years to do and still get it right for our extension project? Well, the simple answer is mechanical fixing systems and accessories combined with the internet and videos like these. Using modern roofing systems such as this are the way forward for the well-informed novice. In the past, you would have needed to use specialist tools for fixing and cutting, probably a working knowledge of lead sheeting and how it works as a flashing. You'd also need an understanding of grading tiles and slates, which are all slightly different sizes before fixing them onto the roof. Thankfully, tile and slate roof manufacturers have now developed roofing systems where all the fixings and the associated stuff such as penetrating pipes, ventilation, waterproofing and how to finish the edges are all included. Now, I love the developments in construction where it takes the mystery out of the trade and makes it easier and accessible for people like you and me to attempt our own builds. It makes a load of sense. There's not enough labour around in the UK to satisfy the demand of the growing home improvement market, so builders are always going to be in demand. For many applications, and here I'm using traditional clay pan tiles as an example, there are now a range of accessories that go along with the tiles themselves that you just mechanically fix in. Along with these accessories, the tiles have an interlocking element, although you'd never know it from looking at it, and this allows us non-roofers to do a great job and maintain the manufacturer's guarantee. When I'm choosing my tiles or slates, before I go too far, I'll make sure to phone up the technical helpline as I want to know there's someone there to answer my many questions when I get on the job. We are seasoned novices, but we also have loads of questions. We want to work with companies and suppliers who like to provide support to their products for people like us. Now, in this one, I used Marley and their Lincoln Pan Tile and their telephone support, I have to say, was brilliant. Now that I've chosen my tiles and my manufacturer, first thing I'll do is work out my area of roof in square metres. I'll get the length from the plan and the height from the section. In this case, I'm constrained by the first floor windows. I'll work out the pitch using some trigonometry or by drawing it out using CAD or a protractor. And I'll double check that the pitch is within acceptable limits for the particular tile I'm gonna be using. Don't make the mistake of using the plan. You won't have enough tiles as you've not taken account of the slope. With my area, I can then work out the quantity required of tiles and I'll allow at least 10% for wastage and cutting, more like 15% when I'm a beginner where I have roof windows like in this example. Ordering and laying the tiles themselves is however the easy bit. Before that, we need to fix our underlay or roofing membrane and set out the substrata, which is what we fix our tiles or slates into. Now you may think that on a roof, it's the tiles or slates that are the waterproof bit, but actually they are just in effect a rain screen. In contemporary building, it's the roofing membrane sitting underneath the tiles or slates that provides things such as the water barrier, the air tightness and the breathability of the roof, sometimes in conjunction with the vapour barrier. There's other things to consider such as vapour control and insulation and check out my other video here to get your head around <laughs> these concepts. As always in our self-build developments, it's about balancing the options and making the decision based on our own circumstances. Since we've chosen these clay pan tiles, our substrata will be roofing battens with a breathable roofing membrane laid underneath to catch any water that is blown through the tiles. If we were uh, using traditional slates, we might be using sarking boards to create the roofing deck. 
with a breathable sarking fell over and nailing the slates directly into the sarking board. So back to our underlay, let's choose a breathable membrane. Be sure to check that it is a roofing membrane. Standard membranes such as this blue, mo blue one we're using for the walls won't cut it. It's too light a gauge and without boring you with the rules and regulations, it won't comply with the British standard. Now we need to set out our battens. In this case, we don't need counter battens since we're not using a deck. Roofing battens will be 25 millimeters in height and either 38 or 50 millimeters in depth, depending on things like your rafter centers and the weight of the tiles. Your manufacturer's technical department will give you guidance on that. The membrane will sag between the rafters and any moisture will be able to travel down to the bottom into your gutter. Set out the membrane from the bottom with overlaps to suit the manufacturer's instructions. The most important thing is to set out the roofing battens starting from the bottom since you don't want a cut tile at your eaves. You set out these battens based on the, the tile length and allow a suitable projection to the roof gutter, normally 50 millimeters. And again, check your manufacturer for that instruction. Using the length of your tiles, just work your way up the roof, fixing the battens over the membrane. And you can, to help you, either use a free program like SketchUp or do it old school style with a pen and paper. I've made plenty of videos on using SketchUp, so just click on one of the links here. Now let's have a look at our roof and its junctions. Here we have an abutment where it meets the existing wall, an eaves and two verges at each side. And there are standard details for each of these scenarios, so let's find them on the manufacturer's standard details. Where the new roof meets the wall, the abutment detail that is, to keep the water out we usually use lead or zinc for these bits and we call these junctions flashings. I'll need to have a minimum of 150mm upstand for a flashing detail which will tuck into the horizontal course of the brick. You might want to consider getting a skilled tradesman for this if you're unsure, but otherwise you need a grinder, uh, usually a 300mm roll of code 4 lead, although I can't remember if I use 600 here, and a sealant gun with lead point and sealant to seal along the lead and the brick course. Don't rely on mortar as the expanding nature of the lead will just crack it through the changing seasons and water will be able to get in eventually. For the eaves, we need to ensure that our roofing membrane terminates safely in the gutter, so leave it longer by at least 100mm and then you can trim it later once you've got the other elements in place. Since our roof needs to be breathable, we need to keep a ventilated cavity between the top of the membrane or the surface of the membrane and the underside of the tiles. Thankfully, the manufacturer has some details we can check out to help us in our self-build journey where preparation and research will always save us from mishap. And here's where these new systems come into their own. As well as the waterproofing aspects, we need to show ventilation at the top abutment and at the eaves to allow airflow along this cavity. These pan tiles come with a roofing system with various plastic accessories, perfect for the skilled and well-prepared novice such as us. And these accessories just fix in pair these details and once again you can just call up the manufacturer if you need a clearer explanation. I think I made three or four calls while I was creating the order to get my head around the system and make sure I paid for all the bits and pieces in one go. By the time I was on site I knew exactly what was going and where. With the plastic accessories in place it's time to fix the tiles and these use an idiot proof mechanical fixing system which goes into the top of the battens. The tiles have an interlocking edge so the combination of the interlocking junction and the mechanical fixing gives us the required double fixing laid out in the British standards. For the edges to maintain the double fixing requirement where there's no tile to interlock to 
we use an additional fixing which will be part of your system. There's also the issue of working at height, preparing a plan for you and your colleagues, and safe working which for a single storey home extension is not a particularly complex thing to prepare for. Definitely not a big deal to hire a scaffold or platform for a small project such as this. I hope you get lovely weather for your roofing adventure and hopefully a nice suntan to go with it. Hit me a like if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.